Hi gang, thanks for stopping by, and in this episode I'm going to be drawing a pen and ink landscape on a note card. And I did this on a note card because uh, it's a lot easier for me to film smaller pieces because it takes less time, and I don't want my videos to run forever, and plus I don't want them to play at like 300 times normal speed. So I thought I would just do kind of a, a doodle, a doodle kind of landscape on a note card. To demonstrate a couple things one you don't always need the best materials and the best supplies to produce a nice piece of art so if you don't have the best equipment if you don't have the resources to invest in the best supplies and tools don't give up on art keep at it not having the best things life is a little bit harder but when you are finally able to invest in the best tools and the best supplies and materials your art is going to be just explosively good so uh, develop your technique with some of the I won't call it inferior but you know just your basic supplies like this pen cost me 33 cents seriously and I have another pen that I'm going to use it cost me 50 cents and I fly through them but it's not a huge investment and I'm able to do pretty much what you could do if you spent two or three dollars on a pen so uh, Maybe I could draw better with a two or three dollar pen. I don't know. I the difference just is kind of negligible. I think at this point, but uh, sometimes life is easier when you use the the best tools. But don't give up if you don't have those. That's the point of this. So this scenery is pretty typical of where I live in the Siskiyous part of the Cascades, and I grew up in the Midwest. So seeing stuff like this every day is. Uh, it brings me so much pleasure and inspiration and I just wanted to share some of that with you in a time-lapse video that I did of the Wayward Valley and it's kind of bowl shaped and the clouds are always doing some really neat things as they try to make their way across and uh, you can't see it in real time of course but when you put the camera on it and take a picture every 10 seconds you really get to see what's happening and I, I love that I find it really fascinating I just wanted to share a little of that with you. Uh, growing up in the Midwest, I drew mountains because it's it wasn't something that I saw every day. So I imagined if I if I grew up around this every day and I've talked to people who have lived here their entire life, you know how they would feel about living in in the f in the flat plains and getting to see a thunderstorm that covers an entire region of the U.S and watching the lightning just propagate for hundreds of miles across the thunderstorm. That to me is, is something I miss incredibly. Um, it's beautiful in the Midwest when you see stuff like that. It's also terrifying because sometimes it means there's tornadoes or you know, lightning strikes can cause house fires. Here thunderstorms are especially terrifying because they cause forest fires and those can you see them on the news all the time they do an incredible amount of damage and they're absolutely terrifying so when i hear lightning or when i hear thunder and see lightning out here i get really concerned and so do most people but not so much in the midwest a lot of people will go outside and watch a a summer a summer thunderstorm in the distance and enjoy the orange glow of heat lightning as we used to call it um, I just recall those scenes with fondness so I imagine if I grew up here maybe I would would draw cornfields and and barns but growing up in the Midwest I drew mountains and finally as as an adult well into my adulthood I'm fortunate enough to live here now and it's brought me great inspiration and I doodle the stuff that I see and being able to study it in detail out here and really get to learn how this should look I think it has helped me grow tremendously as an artist so in the last couple minutes here I want to tell you another reason why I am drawing this um, the other day I, I work a second job I work outside and um, I am a fueler in Oregon there's a law that you can't pump your own gas and they pay people to put gas in your car and I do that as a side job for a number of reasons that um, really work well for me and it's something that I really enjoy but in the course of my job on occasion it can get pretty busy and 
I'll not collect money for gas or whatever will happen. It, there'll be some confusion. So I usually make up the difference. Well, the other day I ended up, it cost me $35 for gas and I don't even have a car. So I was really irritated and one of my regular customers asked me how I was doing and I, well, he dared to ask and I was honest with him. I said, I'm doing terrible. You know, I basically am out $35 and I live a pretty austere lifestyle. So $35 means a lot to me. And he was very sympathetic and he usually tips a dollar or two and he tipped me a dollar and I said, thank you. I really appreciate that. And when I opened the dollar, there was a check in there for $35. So, uh, I was really touched. So I'm drawing this for him and I'm going to give him back his check with the assurance that I'll be okay. And a nice message to let him know that, uh, his generosity really encourages me and lets me know that there are really nice people out there. All right, there it is. Another episode. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. It means a lot more than $35 I lost. <laughs> so just keep visiting keep hitting like keep commenting here's a video that you can check out if you haven't hit subscribe and take care